Kane and Lynch 2 Dog Days is a sequel to, well, an ugly, ugly game. But beyond the basic idea of the characters and some loose references to past events, Kane and Lynch 2 bears little resemblance to its predecessor. How's about I just tell you that this is a good thing and we move on, cool? Kane and Lynch 2 tells the story of a criminal duo that hasn't exactly been super close over the years. The crazy psychopath Lynch has moved to Shanghai and at least seems to have settled down a bit. When a big gun running deal comes his way, he brings Kane into town to lend a hand. Things immediately go sideways, setting up plenty of reasons for Lynch and Kane to shoot their way through town. The story's a little flat, especially in the second half, where it all boils down to, We gotta get the fuck out of here! We gotta get out of here! Followed by them getting the fuck out of there. Ah, this is fucking stupid! Holy shit! The biggest thing the Kane and Lynch 2 has going for it is its crazy visual style. The whole thing looks like it's being filmed on a cell phone or crappy flash-based camera. So the whole screen is covered in fake MPEG compression artifacts, bright lights blow out the lens and streak across the screen, and there's a lot of color separation and other deliberately crappy effects. And they're used perfectly. On top of that, the half-broken camera jitters and shakes around like a drunk guy is following Kane and Lynch around Shanghai. It's especially crazy when you start running. Now, the footage we're showing here probably looks super disorienting, but it's one of those cases where when you're controlling the action, the swimmy camera isn't quite as hard to follow. In any event, if you've got a weak stomach, you can turn on Steadicam mode to remove the loping, stumbling camera movement. But you can't turn off the artifacting and other effects, and that's definitely a good thing. Some explosions practically destroy the on-screen image, frame rate and all, and it looks amazing. Unfortunately, most of Canal Inch 2 doesn't live up to the high mark set by its crazy visual trickery. The action is that of a fairly standard cover-based third-person shooter, and the only weapons you can use beyond regular guns are fire extinguishers and other exploding tanks that you can pick up and toss out at your opponents. With no grenades or anything like that, it's difficult for the game's AI opposition to get to you, making the game feel a little shallow. It's also shockingly brief. I played through on the normal difficulty and finished in something like four hours. Yeah, four hours. If it changed up the gameplay significantly from start to finish, that might work, but the only big change is one vehicle sequence where you fire out of the side door of a moving helicopter. Oh, and there's a chapter where you're naked and covered in gnarly looking cuts. But that doesn't really have any actual gameplay changes to consider. With the game's length in mind, you would think that the cooperative play would be a huge feature, but it feels like it was designed to outdated specifications. To play online co-op, you have to go create a separate co-op lobby, get a player in there, pick a chapter, and go. <laughs> There's no way to jump into someone else's game on the fly, and if one player quits, the game ends. Too many other games have streamlined the co-op process for this to not stick out here. The multiplayer mode from the first game returns, with a few new twists on the rules, but the whole mode is made better by virtue of it just being used with a game that has fundamentally superior gameplay. For those of you who have spent the last couple of years pretending that the first game doesn't exist, the main mode is called Fragile Alliance, and it's a unique balance of cooperative and competitive play. It starts with a team of criminals going up against AI opposition to take down a big cowboy score and then reach a getaway vehicle within four minutes or so. If the criminals do the job as intended, they all split the cash. But at any point, you can gun down one of the other human players and turn traitor, keeping the cash you've collected for yourself if you can escape. Ideally, this forces you to keep an eye on your teammates at all times in case one of them turns. But in practice, it rarely makes sense for players to turn on each other anywhere other than at the very end of the level, since fighting through the AI opponents by yourself is kind of a hassle. That, along with basic human nature, which results in idiots just shooting me in the head for no reason at the start of the looting process, just because I shot them last round, is a real wet blanket. There's also a cops and robbers mode, but the coolest mode is undercover cop. It's the same basic idea as the rest, but one player is secretly told that he's the cop at the beginning of each round. That player doesn't get marked as a traitor when he kills other players, so the cop's goal is to stealthily impede the crime without being noticed. It's kind of awesome. The other multiplayer issue is that the maps are very similar every time you run them. The AI cops and thugs are usually stationed in the same spots, and the choke points, as well as the good points to go rogue if that's your thing, are the same every time. It makes the six maps feel repetitive a lot sooner than they probably should. On the 360, there's almost a benefit to the game's brevity, but I'm not sure that everyone else out there will encounter the major issue that surfaced after I had the game running for several hours. It didn't happen at all during my first pass through the game, but over time, the game began to hitch up more and more frequently whenever I'd shoot somebody. This happened on two different slim Xbox 360s and one Elite. It's pretty messed up. Here, take a look. 
We actually decided to run this footage past the game's developer last week, and it sounds like they have a patch in the works. But right now, as of this recording, the 360 version appears to have some pretty serious issues. After spending way too much time trying different 360s, installing the game, uninstalling the game, clearing the system cache, I mean, even trying a different profile only reduced the problem rather than eliminating it. With any luck, you'll never run into this issue, and they'll probably have it patched up soon. But yeah, it's kind of broken right now. You know, I have to admit, I was kind of pulling for Kane and Lynch 2. The first game looked incredibly exciting right up until the moment where you had to actually hit start and play it. If that original potential could be harnessed, well, I figured that a sequel at least had a shot at being amazing. And limited portions of it are. The visual style is insane and unlike anything else on the market, and it's really worth seeing for yourself. But it's also a game you could play and complete in an afternoon, multiplayer included. That, to me, is the very definition of a rental.